If you live in Southern California, you're living with faults. But if you live in the San Bernardino Mountains, you're intimately acquainted with them. In fact, the very shape of this region bears the mark of the San Andreas Fault Zone, which includes the Arrowhead Fault that formed portions of Waterman Canyon and its famous hot springs. Called the third branch of the San Andreas by some seismologists, the Arrowhead Fault is actually part of a group of faults that form the southern section of the 800 mile long San Andreas. I'm Corinne Wetmore with ROTW News and I'm standing almost directly over the spot where the Arrowhead Fault and the San Andreas intersect. Today on part two of Living with Faults, we're going to explore how the San Andreas helped to form our mountain region and what we may expect to experience should a 7.0 or larger quake occur here. Glance across the 15 freeway in Cajon Pass and you'll get a bird's eye view of the San Andreas as it descends through Lone Pine Canyon. Not only does it cut through the pass, it's also responsible for forming it, explains geologist Eric Pounders. We're standing right now in the middle of the Cajon Pass. The 15 freeway goes from Southern California here across the San Gabriel and San Bernardino Mountains up through Cajon Pass. And this pass is here because the San Andreas Fault has made a depression in the valley. Now, these mountains are actually here because of the San Andreas Fault. There's an interesting feature where we have a bend in the San Andreas Fault. Normally, it would just be sliding along like this, but because there's a bend there, it can't slide, it gets stuck. And because of that sticking, it's building tension and it pops up mountains around that area. On one side, over here, we have the San Gabriel Mountains. On this side, we have the San Bernardino Mountains. And in between is the San Andreas Fault, creating the Cajon Pass. Now this lake is here for the opposite reason of the San, uh, San Bernardino and San Gabriel Mountains. Instead of bending this way, it's bending this way, and as it slides by, it opens up a hole that's been filled with groundwater. This is called Lost Lake. It's also known as a sag pond. This happens where you have a backward bend in a, sand, or a strike slip fault, and it opens up a hole. Along with fault form features, the mountain region contains many man-made additions such as highways, railways, distribution centers, bridges, and dams, along with lifelines such as water, phone, and electricity that will be seriously impacted should a large quake strike. So what can we expect to experience? So the things that we should be aware of if we live in the San Gabriel Mountains, the San Bernardino Mountain areas, is that when an earthquake happens on these faults, there's a few different things that we might expect to see. One would be rupturing along some of the major roads. For example, we're in the San, or we're in the Cajon Pass right now. Interstate 15 goes through here. Many different lifelines go through here, like electricity and the rail systems. Many of the things that we take for granted when we flip on the switch or turn on the faucet, those things might not be available to us after a large earthquake. Now imagine for a moment that you have a pipe going through this area and the fault crosses it. Now the fault is going to actually rupture the surface. So if there was a pipe that was once continuous, it's now been broken. Now water, electricity, whatever is going through that pipe is not going to be able to do that until it gets repaired. So it's going to take a period of time to get those services that we've come to expect and need back online again. Also, uh, more locally, there can be ground movement. We can have landslides in particular areas that might cut off roads. We can have them washed out in some places because of perhaps uh, different failures of where water is stored. Uh, there, all these things are possible. What we don't see may present the greatest risk, particularly the many natural gas and petroleum pipelines that run underground through the Cajon Pass. These would rupture in a large quake and potentially spark a large wildfire. As for roads, bridges, lakes, and dams, civil engineer Brian Thomas describes what we might face in a 7.0 quake. As far as the lakes go in a magnitude 7 earthquake, you could expect to see uh, big waves sloshing up over the dam, up along the side of the, the, the shoreline. Um, the houses closest to the lake would probably receive water damage, um, could even potentially destroy a large portion of the homes up against it. When we come to the dams in a 7.0, the dams are really designed to, to withstand a much larger earthquake scenario than that. So with um, the dam we have here behind us at Big Bear Lake, the gravity filled dam, that one's going to be able to withstand up to an 8.0 earthquake. With an earthen filled dam, 
we're looking really at what the strongest point of the compaction is. Because as long as the dirt holds together in its, in its original form, then we really don't have a problem. Okay, roads and bridges in a 7.0 earthquake um, really depends on the type of earthquake that we're gonna, gonna experience. I mean, there's a, a vertical slip fault which pushes the, the roadway up. That creates an obvious and immediate danger to the motoring public in either direction. I mean, obviously, if you're on the downside, you're going to run into the road. If you're on the upside, you're going to fall off the road. The other hazard that can be uh, attributed to that is falling rocks from the cuts. And as we know up in the, the um, Big Bear area, Running Springs area, there is a lot of hazard for falling rocks. And in the 7.0, those rocks will come loose. So in the event of an earthquake, the, the best bet is to just stop the vehicle safely as quickly as you can. Okay, some particular dangers that you need to be aware of during a 7.0 earthquake in, in the mountain areas, especially around a lake, is if you're on a dam, get off the dam as quickly as you can, as safely as you can. If you're driving along the road that fronts the dam, uh, you want to be careful of wave action from the, the lake coming up and, and sweeping your car away. Remember, water weighs about 7.5 pounds per gallon, and you've got 1,000 gallons coming at you. That's seven and a half thousand pounds. That's the equivalent of a small SUV hitting you. So just, if you can come to a stop safely, always do that. Uh, don't try to drive on if the water continues to, to move because it, it will push you aside. A large quake will likely overload our local emergency personnel. So what help can we expect in the crucial hours following a major quake? My name is Al Kronikoff with the Fire Department, San Mariano County Fire. I want to give you uh, basically what will happen with the fire department and the police department and law enforcement in general doing a major earthquake or a major type of disaster of such as a uh, terrorism activity. We are going to be extremely busy with major life hazards such as hazardous materials, big fires, or major collapses. And with that, we depend a lot on our community to assist in getting the smaller stuff taken care of. That's why CERT teams were put in action so that uh, we can go ahead and count on them to assist with smaller incidents such as broken arms, small accidents to pull people out of, into safe, safe zones and so forth. Uh, the CERT role in the uh, mountain community is just that. They're, they work as a lieutenant under our station captains and get their assignments from their st our station captains as to what to do during a major emergency when it occurs. We have also initiated what's called a red and green card uh, access, which allows each person to identify at their household if they're in good health, green, if their uh, house is in good structural shape, green, if they're not, if there's any type of uh, medical aid that needs uh, immediate attention or there's some sort of damage, for example, a pipeline that's busted, gas pipeline, so forth, or that structure is extremely damaged, then they put a red card. With that, the CERT member or a fire person, if they're available, will go down the block and identify quickly what emergency needs there might be. Community Emergency Response Teams, or CERT, are present mountain-wide from Crestline to Big Bear Lake but not all areas have the red and green card program. Please contact your local fire department for more information. The San Bernardino Mountains are located in a section of the San Andreas that hasn't gone in more than 300 years. In short, we're long overdue for a large quake in our area. And much like the warnings that preceded the 2003 old fire, experts are telling us it's no longer a matter of if, but when a large quake will occur in our region. So stay tuned for part three of Living with Faults, where we'll explore how to prepare for and survive a large quake. This is Corinne Wetmore reporting for ROTW News.